Okay. All right. So um, I do have two examples <clears throat> about motors. Motors together, grand circuits and theaters motor or motors. Why do we care about motors? We have touched on them, guys, in the uh, fall, I believe. We're going to touch on them the last time in the spring because all the machines that you have, all the HVAC equipment that you guys did load calculation for them are motors. So um, we need to be able to size the overcome temperature device. So I have two. <clears throat> this is a system. You guys have seen this before. I have a system, uh, motors, and HVAC equipment. Okay? Calculation. Motors and HVAC equipment. Calculation part, yeah. I'm going to do calc today. Um, Aaron, my friend, tomorrow I will do the chapter four that you're waiting for, the panels. I thought I would have your full undivided attention today. We'll do a calc, and tomorrow we'll do different comments. So if you guys grab your code book, get your code book handy, and let's do some calculation. Let me tell you what we have first. We have a feeder <coughs> that we are calling at number seven. Everybody can see that? A feeder that's called number seven. <clears throat> it's feeding a system and protected by an overcurrent protection device number six and a disconnect. The disconnect and overcurrent protection device are in one enclosure. The green is an enclosure, different enclosure. And then they're coming to a gutter. This is a gutter. And from the gutter, we're tapping the feeder to feed two loads. It could be 100 loads. We're just tapping only two. So I have two loads. These loads have to be motors, and for each one of these loads, guys, I need to decide the following. The disconnect by code, the overcompetition device, the controller, the overload, as well as the, as well as the brain circuit. Um, the green stuff is equipment. <clears throat> Everybody can see that green stuff is equipment. <clears throat> and actually, number eight also, an equipment ground conductor. I need to pull an equipment ground conductor with it. Uh, this one here? Yeah, the other one too. This one is a gutter. No, the one, uh, more than one more too. This same, same symbol, flip 90 degrees on the top of your box. Number three. Number three. three. Sorry, number three. Number three. Number three yeah. is a fuse. Number three is a fuse. Number three is a fuse. Contactor, grand circuits, and overload. Okay, this is typical, guys, what we do. This is what we typically design, right? We design um, um, a feeder. You can tap these feeders, throw them in the wall. What we're going to do later on, um, Kiri, my friend, we're going to do the same system from an MCC. And instead of having a feeder with a gutter, we're going we're gonna to have an MCC. We're going to have an MCC. As a matter of fact, if you guys adjust this one to make it more appropriate, I want to adjust this particular one, the seven. Seven should be coming directly from here, really. Technically, seven is the feeder, oops, the feeder right in here. This is where seven is. Can you guys adjust this one? The cable. So does it, does it do you any good to have the cable ahead of the overcap to show us? Okay? This is a magnetic starter. Magnetic starter. So we're feeding two motors. We have two magnetic starters, M1 and M2. Um, I have full load amp for the first one, 520. For the second one, 390. I have a horsepower. My horsepower for the first one, um, this is my horsepower. Equal 200 for the first one. For the second one is 150. The voltage <coughs> for the first one is 208 for the second one is also 208. Uh, both systems are three phase. Both systems are three phase. So we are looking at three phase system. We don't deal with anything less than three phase. Three phase system. The service factor, SF is service factor, guys. The service factor is one for the first one. The service factor for the second one. <coughs> Um, and it doesn't have a service factor, it has a rise. And also I have a code letter equal to L for the first one and for the second one equal to M. 
One more time. I have full load amp, horsepower, voltage, temperature, and code letter. Same thing, full load amp, horsepower, voltage, service factor instead of temperature, and M is the code letter. So we're doing two, three, so one, two, five, for both ones? Absolutely. We're doing one through five for both of them, six and seven only for the two of them. Because remember we did one, um, it was single phase in the fall. Anybody remember that? Doing a single phase one, no? Has been a long time ago. We did a single phase, exactly the same, it was single phase. So I thought you can't get out of the uh, industrial project without doing some calculation at least. Number eight is an equipped magnetic conductor. Is there anything you would like me to read? There's no service factor. There's no service factor. If there's no service factor, carry the service factor will be assumed one. Yep. Any comments, any questions, guys? Any comments, any questions about that? Okay. <clears throat> Shall we go ahead and start when you have a chance? And again, I apologize, I really made a copy for you guys with this, but um, I, st I should start doing it ahead of time, a day ahead of time. I do that with the test, but not with the next test. Any question, guys, what we're trying to achieve here? Any question about what we're trying to achieve? <clears throat> Everybody's good? Okay. So that's what we're trying to achieve. Now, here's what I, um, if you guys draw a table like this, and I can read it for you, uh, at the top it should be motor number one, motor number two, the NEC reference. Number one should be is a disconnect. Number two, also, um, oh, oh, number two was overcompetition device, wasn't it? Number two. Three no, no, num I'm sorry. Number one is the branch circuit. Number one is a branch circuit. Number two is a disconnect. Number three is the overcompetition device, dual element time delay fuse. Number four, controller. Number five is overload. <clears throat> if you can draw a table like this. And I'm, I need to size these for, uh, like um, <clears throat> Aaron, you said, these will be for the two motors, right? <clears throat> Any question guys about this? If you take a few seconds to sketch them, please. Okay, so dual element time delay fuse. Um, okay, before we go ahead, any comments, guys, any questions about these before we go ahead and, and start? What I did, I had a couple of pictures for you, just a quick reminder, so we can uh, we can uh, get us the full load current and, and so forth. So the first one, guys, I have for you is the overload. When we cite the overload, <clears throat> Here's a reference, I got a picture for you. Um, 430.32A1. If the motor, we did, did that one before, is if the motor service factor is 115 or greater, you multiply by 115. If the temperature rise is 40 or less, 40 um, degrees Celsius or less, you multiply by 125. All other application, you multiply by 150. Cool? Remember that one? Um, the second one that I had uh, for you is um, when we deal <clears throat> when we deal with the overcompetition device. You guys remember that table? When we deal with overcompetition device, you have to take you go to. I'm asking you about dual element. It's the V phase. The multiplier is 175. Cool. Everybody knows where these tables are. Please open your code book and highlight them. Make sure you know how to use them. So that's the your multiplier. 
When we when we talk about overconfiguration device, guys, there are four types: non-time delay fuse, no element time delay fuse, instantaneous, inverse time. I single-handedly, Chad, decided to use um, dual element time delay fuse for this example. Okay. Um, the most important thing is this one. The most important thing, probably, before we start is, is this one. This is table 430.250. This is where you find the full load current from any secret book. Uh, let's go find it. The system is 28200. Uh, 28200. I have them right in here. Um, this should be the 200 here. I can't read them. Um, uh, so I have 200. I don't know if you guys can see if I can get my stuff over. You probably can see it. So here's my two systems that I have right in here. I have 100 and 200 and 150. They're right at the bottom here. Okay. And since it's a 208 system, so these are the two values that I'm looking for. These are the two values I'm looking for. 396 and 528. 396 and 528. For, can you give me one second here for, um, we use these values, guys, from the MEC code book for everything except the overload. These values that I'm looking at right here, we're using for everything except the overload. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad, we understand that one? We use these two values for everything except the overload. Before we leave, this is the first and the last time we see Chad talking about this table. <laughs> Anybody does not know what this table applies to? Here's the voltages, the range of the voltages. If your system is 28, you go to it. If your system is 240, you go this. If 480, here's your system. 600 here. 2400, you go over here. And these two are rarely used. 15 and, and 115 and 200. All these are conduction motors. If you have a synchronous machine, you have to be on this side. 99% of the equipment that we use, they're in as induction motors, unless they tell you otherwise. But if it was a synchronous machine, then where are you going to come? To this side. Any question, guys, about this table? Any question about this table? Okay, everybody knows where we got the 396 full load current for the 150 and the 528 full load current for the, um, the overload. <clears throat> Any comments, guys? Any questions about that? The full load. Everybody knows how to use this table? Okay. All right. So this is um, so this is just to get you where, where we got the information. Now let's go back here and, and put a couple of things. I need your help with, with some of them, guys. So let's use a color blue this time. So for the branch circuit, here's the reference for my branch circuit. Um, so here's the reference for my brain circuit, guys. You need the references for 30.22 and table 310.15b16. That's what you need the references for your brain circuit. Cool? Okay, so what does that tell you? That will tell you you take uh, the full load current of a motor. The full load current, everybody knows, um, and we went. We found the full load current, guys, from table, table 4, 30 dot, um, 252, 250, was it 252 or 250, the one that we're looking at? 250, thank you. 250. So these are the three references that you need. Article 430.22 or section, table 330.15b16, and table 430.25. Uh, that, that's one, uh, 250. Okay, from the first one, guys, you find the full load current, like we said, 528. The full load current is 5, it's 1 to 8 amps for this boy, and for this boy is 396 amps. That's my full load current. Cool? Everybody knows where we got the full load current, 528 and 396, right? Everybody knows where we got the full load current. For 150 and 200 horsepower motors under 28. 
Okay. <clears throat> again, I do it one time, guys. I would never see it again. Yeah. 450.22 will tell you, you it's continuous load. So what do you do if it's continuous load? Multiply by 1.25. So here's the math that you need to do. You take 1.25, multiply it by 528, and if you guys do this, you're going to end up with 660, 660F. Cool. And the same thing here. Um, so this is step one. This is step two. Step one, step two. Um, 1.25 times... 1.25 times uh, 396 equal uh, this this guy uh, 495 495 uh, 495 any question that about this straightforward no gimmicks nothing no gimmicks nothing right straightforward. Then the second thing I need to do is find the connector size. Since these amps are a little bit high, right, I would like to pedal. Can I pedal feeders, <clears throat> branch circuits? We pedal feeders all the time. Can I pedal branch circuits all the time? So I need to pedal. Huh? You can run bus bars to, yeah. Eventually you have to come to a junction box or disconnect and then go with cables. You can't bring the bus busways directly to the motor. Yes, sir. So at 125, it's because it's continuous. Continuous load. Now, because it's, what about the larger, like taking the larger motors? You know, we That's for the feeder. We're doing branch circuits. Okay. Everybody understand that what we're doing right now is branch circuits. <clears throat> we're not doing the feeder yet. We're doing the branch circuit. Okay. Then I decided single handedly to. Um, to pedal two sets, guys. I will pedal two sets. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 660 divided by 2. That would give me 330 amp, right? And if you go to table, this is table 310.16, 310.16, 310 if you go there, um, it will give you, and I need help with that one, um, I think 400. It will give you the following. It will give you two sets, two sets of three conductors. Each one of them is 400 KCM THHM. Done. Did we do it right? Two sets. Two sets that feed these uh, conductors. Guys, wherever you go, work forever, wh 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 whomever you work for, you will be doing this calculation. You have to do it. Yeah. At least 40% of the loads in any building is motor loads. So you need to be able to size these branch circuits. Okay, the second thing, guys, same way, I'm going to pedal too. I'm going to take the 396 and pedal. I decided to pedal. So if I divide it by 2, I, ca I came up with, uh, give me one second here, bud. Uh, so it's continuous because it's 495. Um, yeah, you're right. We divide that. Yeah, that right. We did that one right. Okay, so we got yeah six six zero divided by two. Yeah, you're right. We have to take the after you multiply it by one point two. Thank you. I'm looking at the wrong one. It's four nine five divided by two. What do you get? We divide this one by two, my friends. Um, I got two four eight. Two four eight amps. Then. Here's what you're gonna get. Then here's what you're gonna get here. Two sets of how many conductors? Three conductors. Each one of them has uh, 250. Thank you. 250 kcm thhm. Done. I paralleled for branch circuits. We haven't done that before. Paralleling for branch circuits for motors. Um, so that's kind of a new concept for you. Most of the time, we just want one one set. There's two sets that are going directly into the to the motor. They what? It depends where. Yeah, it depends where the gutter is. It could it could run, it could run 50, 60 feet. Depends really where the. 
Yeah, where so here's 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 where they are right here. It depends how far is the motor from the disconnect. Now, Jeff, you and I understand that little from the gutter to the disconnect, they have limitation of ten feet or twenty feet. That's staff rule. So the disconnect has to be within ten feet or twenty feet, depending what staff rule are you using from the gutter. That's limitation, but the motor from the disconnect, if it can be locked in the open position, the disconnect, you can have the motor as far as you want it. But Aaron, you're absolutely right. There's a reason why we use a gutter because we bring a big chunk of power right to where the motors are located. So typically, this will be within 50 feet of the disconnect. That's what the typical application of it. Otherwise, it will defeat kind of the purpose of doing that. Okay, any question guys about the branch circuits? Question about the branch circuits. Okay, let's go to do the second thing. The second thing is a disconnect. For disconnect, Jeff, we're gonna use my friend, uh, the following. My reference for disconnect, we're gonna use 430.110 and DeWalt, uh, DeWalt 3-12. DeWalt 3-12. 430.110 and dual 312. That's my reference. Cool? If you guys go to 430.110, it tells you you have to multiply it by 1.25. So the disconnect, when I saw the disconnect for a motor, the multiplier is 150. Don't ask me, why can't they make it 125 and follow it here? Right? Why can't they make everything 125? Make it easier. Overcompression device, fuse. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. I'm saying, why can't they make everything 150, 125 power As of now, you're stuck with the code. The code says no more than uh, minimum. Minimum is 150. So here's 1.15. Multiply, that's step number one. Multiply this one by 528. Um, I came up with 607, 607 amps. My next standard from DeWalt is 800 amp disconnect. Come over here, same thing, 1.15, multiply this baby by uh, 396. Uh, it will get you 444. Uh, it will get me, I can't start to read here, uh, 445. Or four five five. Okay, multiplying it by one fifteen, give me four five five. Equal four five five. If you go to the walls, guys, the next standard is what? Six hundred yeah. Next standard is six hundred yeah. Any question about the disconnect? So my disconnects are eight hundred amp disconnect and six hundred amp disconnect. Yeah, these are the standards. Yep. Yep. Standards based. Can you guys check that page on DeWalt 3 12? <clears throat> We've used this before for single phase. Now we're using it for three phase. <clears throat> if you guys look at page 312, right in the middle, it says size of disconnects. Um, what we're sizing is D on the wall. Okay. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Straightforward. We did this one for a for a residential. We're just doing it for uh, commercial building. Why this is important, um, Kerry, my friend? You guys are going to be sizing branch circuit for me when you start laying out the Revit. In Revit, you're going to be sizing. You know how many machines you have, the machines that you have, and the own equipment. You're going to do the same calculation for it. Same calculation. Make sense? Same calculation. So that's a quick refresher. Okay, number three, guys, is the overcome friction device. Protect, as we all know, protected from short circuit and ground fault. I single-handedly, Chad, decided to use, there are four types. I decided to use dual and time delay fuse. Just a quick flash, since we already have them. Um, here's what dual element time delay fuse, and the multiplier for three phases, 175. Everybody knows? Now, in the test, if I give you an inverse type circuit breaker, what's your multiplier? 250. 
If I give you instantaneous, what's your multiplier? 800. Cool? So based on this, here's where I got my multiplier. Um, so we're going to go multiply by 1.25. So let's go here and use the first thing as um, we have number three. Um, I have uh, 1.15. I need somebody to help me with that because I think they use little elements here. Uh, 1.75 multiply this one by uh, 528. I need somebody to do the math on please. 924. 924. Do I have a second? Second. 924. 924 amps. Then, <clears throat> let's go to the reference first. The reference for this one, guys, is, um, is table 413.52 and also um, section 240.6. <clears throat> What's the next over computation device for this baby? 1,000. The next standard is 1,000. Not 1,000. We're just using zero. One, zero, zero, zero. So that one is somebody. Oh, you are. A thousand. Uh, huh? Number three. Uh, uh, dual element time delay U. Dual element, the D is that deed or that, that dual element time delay at you. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna go to the next one guys, the same thing. You're gonna see how we repeat it. Uh, 1.75 multiply this baby by uh, 396, who's my favorite? Give me, I don't have the answer again for this. 693 second. Second, okay. And then from 693, uh, oops, that will give me the next standard is what? 700. Next standard is 700. <coughs> Well, I will remind you guys, look at the, what's the disconnect size? 800. What's the uh, uh, overcaptation device? 1,000. You can't, can't, you can't fit 1,000 amp fuse in uh, a fuse holder in the disconnect in 800. So I will leave it as is, but certain application you might have to up this one to what? To the next standard, which is 1,000. Same thing here, 600 amp disconnect. But my overcapacitor is 700. If these are in the same enclosure, how? So do you have to? You might have. You might have to up this one to 800. But you know, we what we do. What we typically guys do is we write the size of a disconnect on. Uh, well, these size on a disconnect when we bed them and the the the, the manufacturers either they provide a fuse holder rated for 800 amp here. <clears throat> and the disconnect rate is for 700 amp, or they make them both, um, uh, in this case, make them both 800, uh, 1,000 amp. So just be aware of that one. Controller. For controller, guys, I would like you to go, if you don't mind, to Article 430. We did that one before, 430.83. And also, we need to do DeWalt, DeWalt um, 6 4. 6 4. DeWalt 6 4. The controllers, guys, what they, the code says when you have a controller, you have to size it based on the horsepower as well as the voltage. So, really very easy. When you size a controller, you're going to size it based on the horsepower. The first one is 200 horsepower at 208. And the second one is 150 horsepower at 208. Remember, all of them are three phase, 208 volts. 
So that's the that's if you get go if you go to six dash, what's that one? Six dash four, please. Um, make sure you know how to use that one when you size your nemas. Six dash four. Six dash four looks like this. And when you have six dash four, there's a single phase and three phase. Obviously, we are looking at what the three phase here. If you guys are looking at um, uh, 200 horsepower, so the 200 horsepower under 208, which would be in this case would be the first one. It says 208 and 200. You need what number for the 200 uh, horsepower? You almost have to go to um, to NEMA. They don't go under 208, higher than that 200. Um, so you have to go. I would go for number six. That's the largest I can get, right? Number six. So both of them are going to be my number six. Both of these enclosures are going to be number six. What they use to, um, what they use is they use um, a, a NEMA that's rated for 240, but the voltage is going to be 208. So you rate them based on the 240. If you go to the 240, guys, what's the size for uh, for uh, 200? Number six, right? And what's the size also for the 150? Number six. So both of them are number six. So this will be NEMA what? NEMA. NEMA number six. And the same thing. NEMA number six. NEMA number six, NEMA number six. Both of them. NEMA number six, NEMA number six. Any question guys about that directly? Overload. <coughs> Both of them are NEMA number six. For the overload guys, I want to remind you, just very quick, go one step ahead here. And here's the rules for the overload. One quick, if, the, if it's marked with the service factor 115, you use 125. If it's the temperature is 40 or less, 125. All other cases is 150. Everybody understand that? So that's the rule that we're going to use that, that we use for the overload. Okay, the rules for the overload is 430.32 though. Um, so NEC code is 430.32. And this is the code for This is the section that you need. And let's go ahead and uh, unsize that boy. Now I want to remind you guys, the service factor, uh, the first motor have a uh, temperature rise of 40 and no service factor. Temperature, so what's the multiplier? 1.25, thank you. And then my multiplier is 1.25. No, times. Here's what you have to, um, times what? It's the only time you use the full load current from the NEC, from the uh, nameplate is for the overload. So what was the name there? 520. Thank you. 520. Very, very important. And that will get me what? 520. I came up with 650. 650 amp. And that's it. Done. That's how you size it. If it's not a standard, then you're going to go down. You just leave it as is and you tweak your overload to match that value. The second motor, guys, if you remember, why are you using 528? Because on the overload, we use the nameplate value, not the full load current. The nameplate full load amp. That's the only exception, guys. This value. <clears throat> this value, this is the only place, carry where you use the nameplate. Everything else is NEC code book. And the, uh, the idea behind it, guys, if you're protecting the windings of the motor, you're going to trust the manufacturers for this. Manufacturers. Okay. So the same thing, guys. Uh, I have a service factor. I have service factor of 1 and no temperature. So if the service factor is 1, what's the multiplier? 1.15. Not 25. 1.15. The multiplier, the service factor is 1. Oh, okay. Right? Great to know. Multiply this one by, what's the nameplate value of that boy? 390, V90, and that will get you a healthy uh, 44449 amp. Done. 
So you tweak the overload to match this one. Any comments, guys? Any questions about that? Comments, questions? Shall I move to the next one? Yep. Either there are two types of overload electronic relays, overload electronic ones, or the heaters. The heaters, you have to go buy yourself a heater. So if they don't make 449, you have to. to to go down to the down, not up to the next standard. So say if you, they make you don't make 449, but they make 440. So what do you do? You buy 440. You don't buy 450 though. Uh, if it's an electronic device, you go tweak it, adjust it to get as close to 449. But if they, if you can, the adjustment only gets you increments of five, for example. Then I go 445. Does that make sense? You don't want to exceed that value. If you exceed it, guys, what happens is you the, you are taking a chance of burning your uh, 200 horsepower motor. That's a big boy on overload. Okay, so we took we talk took about that, talk about that, talk about that. We'll we'll get back to that one. Okay, the second thing, guys, is um, number six. Number six, I want to remind you: overturned protection device for the feeder. Overturned protection device for the feeder. This is actually, since it's only for the feeder, you, 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 you don't really don't need the... So since everything is the feeder, it's, uh, it's covered between both of them, right? So for the feeder, we have done that before, not new. You guys, uh, just very quick review. And um, for the feeder, we go 430.62, the overcompletion device. Uh, the, the code reference is 430.62. And four, oops, um, not four, and uh, two forty dot six. These are the two references. And the NDC code book, guys, says the following. It says you take the largest, fattest, fluffiest overcurrent protection device of the system. What's the largest overcurrent protection device of the two, the two ones that we did? What was the largest, the largest overcurrent protection device of the two here? A thousand. Everybody's okay with that? A thousand? That's what you're going to pick. Okay. So the thousand. Everybody knows where the thousand came to be here? My thousand. That's the largest. So I'll take my thousand and move it all the way. Bam, bam. Okay, here you go. And so here's what you're going to take. You're going to take your thousand, one thousand. Excuse me, Mr. Miller. One thousand. Bam. I put it between brackets. Add to it the full load current of the other, the other motor. The full load current of the other motor was what? 396, right? Add to it 396. 396. And then this will equal to, that's easy, 1396M. And then if it's not a standard, you have to go down. What's the next standard down from 1396? Do we have 1200? Anybody check that? 240? I think 1200 is the next standard down. So I have 13, 1396. Um, I have 1000, 1200, 600. So that's it, 1200. So my next standard down is what? 1200. This boy is going to be a 1200 amp fuse. 1200 amp fuse. 1200 amp fuse. Any question is about this piece of kit? 1200 amp fuse. Okay, 430.24, the reference here is 430.24, and table 310.15D16. That's my reference. Uh, the code says, guys, you take the largest motor, 1.25, multiply it by the largest. The largest was 528, and then you add to it the 396 amps. 
So that you, then you're going to end up you're going to end up with one o five six m. What I'm going to do is I'm going to parallel. So I'm going to take one o five. Let's do that one at the bottom here. So that's the amp that I get. Then the next step, I need to find the par a parallel amp. So one o five six. Uh, divide this one by how many six did I do? Try to three six. Three six. That will get me three hundred and fifty two amps. Then we all know you need three sets now. Three sets of three conductors. Each one of them is five hundred kcm thsn. <laughs> That's the size of your of your uh, branch circuit. The size of your branch circuit is three sets. The size of branch circuit three sets of three. Why why do we always saw three with with motors? We don't even think about the neutral, no neutral. That's the beauty of running three phase motor, guys. Three conductor is done. That's why we run three phase motors, no neutral. Okay, the last thing I have, I'm going to get rid of this one so it doesn't confuse me, is number eight. You guys remember what number eight says? This is for M number one, motor number one. This is M number two. Number number eight, anybody look at number eight? What was number eight? Equipment grounding conductor. I need to pull an equipment grounding conductor with motors um, inside the flex, guys, always inside the flex. Okay, equipment grounding conductor, guys, piece of tape. For equipment grounding conductor, your reference is going to be table 250.122. That's the reference that you're going to be using. Okay, equipment grounding conductor for the first motor. Remember, we're doing equipment grounding conductor for the first motor. So we need uh, an equipment grounding conductor for the first motor. The first motor was, uh, what was the full load current of the first motor? We have uh, a thousand amp. Oops. Okay. So I have one thousand amp. If you take this one to this table, oops, the one thousand here. If you take one thousand amp, thank you. Um, you end up you end up with what? Uh, conductor size. How many? And this one, how many? Now remember, we're talking about branch circuit, guys. How many for branch circuit? Two. We have two of them. Two. Why? Because two sets. Um, two of uh, what was it? The size that you say? Two watt. A thousand amp. Anybody can check that for me, please. Two watt. Two watt. Okay. Any second? Two watt. Number. Watt A W G. Let's say also T H S N T. Let's T H S N T H S N. Let's do the second one. Same thing, guys. For the second one, what's the over temperature device for the second one? <laughs> was it seven hundred? Uh, the over temperature device was seven hundred, right? 700 amp, take it to this table, that will get you the same. Did we parallel up two sets, two conductors? Number, anybody? <coughs> One not, any second? Second, why not? A, W, G, T, S, S, F. And as a matter of fact, a thousand, Here's my thousand. Here you go. I have a table right here. Guys. Here's my one thousand here. Here's my one odd. And what was the other one? Seven hundred. Seven hundred will get you in the eight hundred. So two odd and one odd. Two odd and one odd. Two odd and one odd.
The last thing I didn't, I want you guys to add, we've never done that before, but I thought it's really good to know. Okay, let's just, uh, how about equivalent ground conductor for the field? Equivalent ground conductor for the field, right here. All right, that's equivalent ground conductor. So if you can do me a favor, add number nine here. Number nine. This is equivalent ground conductor for the Peter. Everybody got that one? Equivalent ground conductor for the Peter. See how, how easy that is? Number nine. <clears throat> there you go. Number nine, guys, equivalent ground conductor for the Peter. Um, so here's my number nine. Equivalent ground conductor for the Peter. What was the over temperature device? What was the over temperature device for the Peter? Um, so we did have 105 divided by 6. 1232. How much? Which one? 332. 332. Oops. 332. 332. And what did we raise? What was that one? 1,000. Oh, thank you. 700. And what did we do here? So we went to. Uh, number of conductors, so that's the two, right? That we erase. Did I erase anything else? Uh, yes, yes, yes. M. Okay. And that was M1. All right, sorry for that. Okay, so we take the 1200 amp, guys. Same thing, 1200 amp. Take it to the same table for table 250.122. What's the, what's the conductor and how many? I have three of them, right? Number three off. Three off. A, W, G, T, H, S, N. T, H, H, N. T, H, H, N. Any comments, guys? Any questions about that? The what? Number nine would be the equipment, thank you, equipment ground conductor. Number nine, equipment grounding conductor feeder. Feeder, equipment grounding conductor for for the feeder. He's writing up the edges here. This is the equipment ground conductor feeding the, the gutter. See where we bought it right here. Let me go to back, back, back to with you. Okay, this is that one right here. Do you see that one that's coming all the way and tabbing from it? That comes comes inside the disconnect, inside the gutter, right? Because you need to ground the gutter. Uh, don't you need to ground the gutter? Don't you need to ground the? Uh, I was thinking the gutter was above. A gutter is a, a yeah yeah it's just a raceway yeah a surface multi raceway. Now, do I need number nine? You might not need number nine if you have EMT or something. But say if you're using PVC, you need number nine. Okay, so that's basically what uh, what this calculation. The last thing I'm going to do, guys, is uh, find the. Uh, Something that uh, remember the code letter that we have for our motors, yeah. Full lo the locked current. Do I have a picture of the locked current? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have a picture of the locked current. I don't have a picture of locked current. If you guys go to this table, locked rotor current, I don't have a picture of that. Okay, so the last one I'm going to see, which would be number 10 here, number 10. Is lock rotor turn. Okay, lock rotor current. I'm going to do it first for um, the first time. We'll use it M number one. For M number one, the way they do it, guys, the letter code, um, NEC, EC, code letter. Letter. Remember how I, 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 I gave you code letter L? Okay, so here's how you do it. You find I, 
um, star or log structure term equal what's the horsepower of that force? 200 multiplied by the multiplier 1.73 times um, 208 system multiply this by 1000 and what's the multiplier for L from this which table is there? Is any secret book table 430 dot something? Is it 430.9? Thank you. Oh, 430.7b. 430.7b. Uh, okay, you're going to go to 430.7b. Thanks. 430.7b. 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 This is a table. Okay, so what's the multiplier for 30.7b for L? For an L, the upper limit is 9.99. So you multiply this one by 9.99. I have not done the math, so I need somebody to do that for me. And the last one, guys, for M number 2, same thing. N, E, C, code, letter, and I gave you these for the motors at the beginning. What was the code letter for that boy? That was an M. Code letter M. So let's do the math on that one. I equal 150 times divide by 1.73 times uh, not four, 208 times 1,000. What's the M, the upper limit for M? 11, 11, 11.19, M is 11.19, okay, who's my favorite, who's going to give me the answer here, I need two gentlemen to agree on one answer, oh. Kilo amps? Can, can we get him an amp? Five, you say five thousand? Five thousand six, seven hundred and sixty-eight amps. Any second? Sounds high a little bit. I got five thousand five hundred Okay. All right, so one more time. Three against one here. Five thousand? Five hundred. Five fifty two like this. Yeah. Okay, so five thousand five hundred and fifty two. How about yes, all of them are multiplied by a thousand. Yep. The multi because M guys is given in a K. That's what we multiply by a thousand. Oh. Okay, what was that the answer here? Two gentlemen agree on one answer? Four thousand six hundred and sixty four. Is a tool. How much? Four thousand six hundred fifty-four. Second. 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 Okay. Four thousand six hundred sixty-four. Any question, guys? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to. Um, so that's basically it. That's basically it. The, the calculation. What I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to give you five minutes, and I'm going to do. I'm not going to do a second example. It's all the same. I'm going to show you the homework. I usually go to examples, but everybody got the the calculation. So I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to skip over this example and go directly to your homework. Could you please write your homework? Here's your homework. For this one, this will be homework number five, and I would like you guys to do um, the following. Actually, I'm going to add to this one to the grounding conductor number nine. I'm going to add number nine. Um, that's it. And the code letter? Did I give you the code letter? Yeah, code letter A and B. This is your homework. Homework number seven. So I have a full load M for the two motors 120, 150. Horsepower 100, 125. The voltage though is 480 this time. 
repair, cause letter A and B, and service factor 1 and 1.25. Everybody understand what the first number is first motor, second number, second motor. Everybody understand that? When I say 100, 125, this is the first second. Cool? So, and the same thing, guys, you're going to do it. Okay, when you when you come back from the break, I'm going to do HVAC equipment. One example of HVAC equipment, and then we'll call it a good um, a good one. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Uh, the code letter A and B service SF service factor one for the first motor and one uh, 25 for the second one uh, for overload besides the overload and what I would like you guys to do is I would like you um, to, uh, to do the, the 10 things remember the 10 things um, the last one, number 10, is what? The lock filter current. Lock filter current. Any comments, any questions? Just take five minutes, and then uh, we'll, we'll do an itch track. And that's it, guys. This is the first and probably and the last time you're going to hear Chad talk about this one, except I'm going to review for the test. And when my expectation, Aaron, when, when I come to you guys, you're doing branch circuit later on. When you start doing branch circuit for all your equipments in uh, in Revit, and your panels have to be filled with over a current friction device, a conductor size, how are you going to come up with fill, fill them? That's how you're going to take one motor at a time. Do the calculation for it. With Revit, guys, we care about two things: the over current friction device and the branch circuit size. So then, the question also comes: Is it supposed to be for a different motor and Revit? Remember when we did the when we. When, when we did the panel schedule. Remember the panel schedule? Panel, what is the panel schedule? Panel schedule is circuit breakers and conductors, right? So if you don't do the calculation, Revit will default, guess to what? 20 amps, number 12. So I go to air handling unit, and your air handling unit number 12, 20 amps. Obviously, that's not a load. So that's how we do it for all Revit. When you guys do Revit, I know we're not doing it yet. But as we start laying out our power and we circuit them, it will be great to do the calculation right away and plug in your overcome friction device and your conductor size because it will be populated by what? By the schedule. If you did not, no problem. Your schedule is, gonna, is just going to be wrong and you have to adjust it right at the schedule. Okay? So that's what I thought this example, Jeff, would be a quick review um, of what we have done. Okay. Five minutes, and I want to do one more example, guys, except these are HVAC equipment, like chillers and so forth, specialty. <clears throat> and, um, look at um, very similar. This example is extremely similar, except it's HVAC equipment. When I talk about HVAC equipment, guys, Article 414 NEC code book deal with it. The only difference, Jeff, between an HVAC equipment and a motor is they have some type of a refrigeration cycle. Uh, compressors, they have a compressor. If the equipment has a compressor, it will immediately hermetically seal the motors, which is basically deal with refrigeration cycle. If it has some type of action with refrigeration cycle, you have to move it directly into Article 440. Example of this, guys, chillers. Is a, uh, a notorious, the famous example. Anything that has a chiller, you size it this way. Air conditioning, um, rooftop units um, that has chilling equipment in it. Rooftop units, chillers, air conditioning, um, refrigeration equipment. If you are working in a place where they have a, a huge walk-in refrigerator and you're supposed to power that refrigerator, that's how we do it. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand where we can use this. This example is slightly different than the first because this deals with the refrigeration cycle, either to cool the building or to use it as uh, to cool the you know, food, food storage and, and so forth. Okay, here's what we have. I have two chillers. And the reason you highly unlikely will have this example, guys, typically if you have a chiller, it's sprayed directly fed with the brand circuit. I have two chillers. 
Each one of them has its own disconnect and over completion device and branch circuit, as you can see. They're both fit from a gutter and fit through um, a disconnect and a fuse, a fuse disconnect. And again, I have my feeder coming into it. The feeder should be in, on the other side, but not a big deal. I actually should show it better if you don't mind me here taking number six here and just showing you the proper way. The proper way should be right in here. This is my number six. Can you guys do that? That's where the proper way is. This is the feeder that we're protecting. Um, okay, so what we have, uh, and the, then I need number seven C is the equivalent ground conductor for the feeder. Seven A is the first AC equivalent. Seven B is the second AC equivalent. I just called it seven A. I don't know why, but I call it this way. Seven A, B, and C. Here's the two equipment I have. When you have HVAC equipment, they don't give you horsepower, guys. They don't give you a horsepower. So that's kind of the tricky thing is no horsepower. They always give you the following. Full load, uh, rated load amps or full load amps. They call it rated load amps or full load amps. It's given here. They also give you a LRC. It's called locked rotor current. LRC is locked rotor current. You know what? You're going to see in a second why do I need this value. Lock rotor current, the voltage that we're running these two babies at is 240, and they are three phase. Would it, would it make a difference if they were 480? Not a difference. The calculation I want to do, it, it wouldn't make a difference. The voltage really is irrelevant here. It could be anywhere from 120 to 600 volts. Um, three phase, uh, the only is number of conductors. That's all. The number of conductors. Any comment, any questions about what we're trying to achieve, guys? So first, we need to find the branch circuit, the work efficient device, the disconnect. Then we need the fuse for the system, the fuel, the disconnect for the system, as well as the over efficient device, as well as the feeder for the system. Any comments, any questions? This 440 is coming from NEC. Article 440 is what we're trying to achieve. Any comments before I move to the next? Uh, step. Everybody understand what we're trying to achieve? Size this system. So, when you guys are asked to size the chiller for Chad, do we have a chiller in our project? Yep. In the chiller in Revit, when you drop the chiller, you need to size the following for the chiller. At least over convection device, and you also need to a feeder. That's exactly what you're going to do with the over convection device and the, and the over convection device and the branch circuit right here. So you need at least, at least, number one and number two in Revit when you put them in your schedule. So that will help you guys size this. Does everybody make the connection between what we're doing right now and what our project is required? So when I do red line for you guys and you're not sizing chillers right, this means you didn't connect what we did in the lecture and what we're doing in the lab. Okay, so please add this to your connection. We are doing this one because it's directly related to the chiller in our project. Okay, so let's go do that. The only difference is our system is 480. Okay. Our system is 480. Our system, like in, in, in the project, right? We're running everything at 480. We're not running chillers at 280. We could, but our project is not running chillers at 280. Okay. Go ahead and draw this um, uh, cable, guys. And same thing, number one as branch circuit, number two is over temperature device, number three is disconnect. For the disconnect, there's some monkeying around we're going to do. So please draw the table exactly like I'm drawing it right now. Okay? Okay, so before we go ahead and start, guys, I want to give you the reference for uh, reference for these babies. It's article four. 40.32 and of course table 3 10.15 B16. These are your references. These are your references. These are your refer references. Cool? So let's go ahead and um, and do the calculation. So Kerry, if you go to 440.32, it tells you, hey, by the way, it's continuous load multiplied by 1.25. Really, not no rocket science in it. So 1.2, so you go 1.25 times the full load amp. Now there is no horsepower. 
there is no code for load current to bring, there is no horsepower, is there? Nothing. So you're gonna go find the full load current, which is 70, right? Is it 70 for that one? Did I um, follow the, okay, 70 and 120. Can you guys see where 70 is coming from? That's a full load current on the nameplate. Find 70, 70, and that will give me a, a, a healthy 88 amps, a healthy 88 amps. If you guys take it to table three conductors in under 75 degree column, you're going to end up with three conductors, number three, A, W, G, T, H, H, M. Done. Why three conductors? Three phase. Why number three? Because when you guys go there, even though, Jamie, it's 80, 80 amps, 88 amps, less than 100, so you don't go to the 60. These are three phase equipment. The logs are always waiting for 75. You default to the 75. When you size three phase equipment, guys, what's your default in the table? 35. Uh, 75. Okay, same thing for the second baby here. So um, um, then it will be 1.25 times 120, and that will get you a healthy 150, 150 amp. And for 150, it, it will give you a three conductors number um, one odd. Why not E W G T H H and N? So that's basically um, what you get. Can you guys write yourself a note? This value and this value. The manufacturers call these two values minimum circuit ambicity. Minimum circuit ambicity. These two values, very, very important. If you have an HVAC equipment and you look at the name plate or the mechanical engineer sent you the name, um, the spec for the chiller, on the spec, they will have a value called min MCA, minimum circuit ambicity. So that what, what is the minimum circuit ambicity? It's these two numbers. So when you have the minimum circuit ambicity, Aaron, do you need to multiply this number by 1.25? No. So if you have it on the name plate, immediately you take it, and what do you do? You size the conductor based on it. Can you have thumbs up, Chad? We understand what minimum circuit ambicity is. Minimum circuit ambicity is. Okay, it's now we are not given the minimum circuit ambicity. We are given the rated load amps or full load amps. That's why we have to do it. But if you have a spec and the spec says minimum circuit ambicity is 88, no multiplication. The manufacturers have did the multiplication for you and you have to go directly and size it. A minimum a brand circuit selection current, brand circuit selection current or rated load amps are this value here. Brand circuit selection current or rated load amps, they call them, or full load amps on the chiller, that's the 70. That's the one that you have to multiply by 1 by 2 5. Good point. Yeah. We have an HVAC equipment chat. We did this one, guys, in the fall, if you remember, for AC for single phase. So this is not new info. We're just looking at three phase now, expanding it. Okay, so that's it. That's basically it. Um, the second thing that I would like you to do is the uh, overcome picture device, 440.22. I want to take 440.22. And article 240.6. So these are the references, guys. Um, I think I have a picture of them. Um, okay, uh, rating equivalent. Okay, now, when you do the overcome fiction device, guys, here's 440.22. When you go there, it tells you you have to multiply it by 175. If it doesn't allow your motor to start, meaning every time you start your motor, you blow up a fuse, then you can go to 225. So what's the rule and what's the exception? 
The rule is what I highlighted here, 175. What's the exception? It's 225. I used to size based on exception, but the, the best way, guys, is to size, use the rule. Use the um, 75, 175 is a rule. Again, knowing that you can actually go 225. So default, let's default, I always default to the rule, 175. Now, if you read through this jump here, it doesn't tell you in any way that you can go up if you don't hit the standard. If you read through it, it doesn't say go up if you don't hit a standard. So if you hit a standard, you have three options. Zach, you can go to the bar, get drunk, and cry. That's one option always. The second option, arm and a leg, sell one of your arms and legs, and buy a fuse. That's rated for 53.35 amp. And busman will be more than happy to give you one. Or you can't go up, remember. What do you need to do? Go down. You can also have the option of going up and violating the code. Uh, that has nothing to do with the lock torture current yet. You're going to see in a second. Okay? All right, so everybody knows where 175 came to be. Can I go 225? And I did it in the past. Yes. Default to 175 unless you know other one. Okay, so let's go do that. I did not have the math for this one because I used to do it 120, uh, 225. So I want 1.75 multiplied by 70. Oops. Ah. When you have to delete, it's all your fault, Brian. Um, 1.75 times 70. What's the amp? I need somebody to give me the amp. I don't have the amp for that. Who's my friend? 122 and a half. 122 and a half. 123. 123 a second. 123 amps. Okay, now 123 amps, guys. I can't go up, remember. I can't go up. So I have to go, when you go to 240.6, 120, there's 125, there's no 120, I think 115 is a lower. Anybody can check that for me? One, there's, there's no 115? Okay, there you are, I'm wrong again, huh? 110, 110M. Actually, it sounds like there is, it should be a 10. If there's no 115, it sounds like there should be one. Yeah, I trust you. Absolutely right. 100 to 110. <laughs> Most of the time, guys, when we have a chiller like this, the manufacturer will give you a max, uh, maximum over competition device. I, I, I'm going to talk about it in a second here. 110. So that's my 110. Let's go to the second one, guys. No problem. Piece of cake, Chad. The second one is the same thing. One point. 75 multiplied this by 120. Who's my favorite um, gentleman for the day? 210 second? Yep. 210. 210 amps. Uh, 210 going up. You can't go up, so you have to go down. Let's go 210 going down. That's easy. 200? 200 amps. So I have 110 and 200 amps. Any question guys about this? So that's my um my equipment. Now the manufacturers, guys, one more time, they take these two values, I'm gonna highlight them in green. The manufacturers of these two equipments, they take these two values and they call them uh, maximum overcurrent protection, MOP, maximum overcurrent protection. 
And what they, you know what they do with them, Jeff? They stamp them on the name plate of the chiller. One more time. The manufacturers of the chillers, guys, they take these two values that we calculated, they calculated it in, 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 um, in the factory, and they stamp them right on the name plate of the chiller. So, for example, if you have a chiller right now that says the chiller is going to have um, minimum circuit ampacity 115, maximum overcurrent protection is 200. Do you need to do any calculation? No. Can you have thumbs up, Chad? We understand that one. When you have the minimum circuit temperature and the maximum overcurrent protection device, maximum overcurrent protection device, you really do not need to do anything. No, no need to do anything. Okay? If you don't have them, then you have to use the rated load amps and the full load amps and all the stuff. Do the calculation. This is minimum circuit ambicity. This is maximum overcurrent protection. There's chapter 12, guys, talk about these terms when we reach it. It talks about these, and we talked about them in one of other projects for, for a single phase. Remember, this is really the only difference is three phase here. You didn't have HVAC. They don't do HVAC there. Yeah, they did not. In the motors, they don't do HVAC. So the first example for you is piece of cake. That's why um, I have to modify it now because we modify the program. Okay, disconnect. For disconnect Zatch, my friend, um, <coughs> For, for disconnect, let me give you the, the reference first. For disconnect 440.12, 440.12, and also Mr. DeWalt, 3-12. Uh, okay, so that's my references for the disconnect. My references for the disconnect. Okay, let's go do disconnect. Disconnect. When I have disconnect, guys, there are two sizes for the disconnect. One size is based on the horse, and, and uh, two sizes you have to do. One is based on a full load amp, and the other one have to be based on the horsepower. Okay, so let's do it this way. Uh, the first, the first size you have to do. I'm going to do this one in blue. Uh, it says 1.15 times the rated load amp, which is uh, 70. That will get me uh, 81, 81 amps. If you take the 81 to a DeWalt 312, get you 100 amp. 100 amp disconnect. Same thing for that boy. Um, you're going to take 1.15, multiply this baby by uh, 120. That will get you a healthy 138, 138 amp. But your next standard is 200. Okay, here's my disconnects. Here's my disconnects. Now there's one more step you have to do, guys. One more step when it comes to the disconnect that you have to do. Disconnects for machines have to be rated for two values. Number one, they have to have amp rating, and number two, they have to be horsepower rated. They have to have a horsepower rating and an amp rating. Um, the horsepower rating, guys, if you are to come while the motor is running and you turn this motor off, you don't want this one to blow it up in your face. So they have to have a horsepower rating and an amp rating. But the problem for HVAC equipment, for HVAC equipment, since we don't have a horsepower, what's the horsepower for this? I don't know what the horsepower for this. You know, the, since you don't, so here's the amp rating, but what's the horsepower rating? I don't know what the horsepower rating. So to find the horsepower rating, guys, we have to do two steps. Okay. Here's the amp rating for the motors. I need to find that now, the horsepower rating. Step number one. So this is disconnect amp rating. Can you guys see amp rating? Rating. The second one is going to be the same thing, disconnect force power rating. Same thing for the disconnect horsepower rating. For the disconnect horsepower rating, guys, we do two calculations. We do we, we do two calculations. Calculation number one 
as um, you need to go to a table. <coughs> we have to go to a couple of tables here. Calculation number one is you take the 70 amp, go all the way to table three. Uh, I'm sorry. You have to take uh, 70 amps. Now remember, we're trying to find, we found the amp rating of the uh, disconnect, no problem. I need to find, to find the horsepower rating, I take the 70 amps. You have to take this baby to, um, now we need to take it to uh, table four. What the heck is four? Um, 430.250, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, 430.250, because it's three phase. Um, you're going to take it to four table, uh, 430.250, 430.250. What's the horsepower rating under under uh, uh, the voltage of this system is what? Are we using 480 here? I thought we were using a 240. 240. Okay. If you guys go to this table, I don't have a, a page of it. Okay. There you go. No, this is the one, the, the second one. Okay, here you go. Here's how the, this goes, guys. To find the horsepower rating for the equipment, first of all, what's the system that we're using? Here's the system that we're using. What's the full load amp of the HVAC equipment that we're using? 70. So where's the 70? 70, 70, 70 right here, 80. 70 or more, 80. If you go across, what's the horsepower rating of this equipment? 30 amps. That's how they find the horsepower rating of the disconnect for HVAC equipment. Now, there is looking at me and you didn't do this one for the motors. Remember what the motors had. What did the motors have? Horsepower. We already know that. The HVAC equipment don't have a horsepower. Do they? They don't have a horsepower. They have, they give you KVA and they, so they have to find the horsepower rating for this one. Any question guys about how we make, how came up, how we came up with 30? So you can go back. <laughs> Now you're going to go back, and um, and this amp rate rating. Uh, let me go here. Oh, is that before or after? Okay, so the the horsepower rating um, is 30. Based on this, is 30 horsepower. Okay, let's do the second thing, guys. The second one. The second one, same thing. Take the what is it? 120. 120 amp. Take this one to the same table, table 430. Uh, um, 250, 250, under 240 volt, remember? And let's go back and see for 120. One, one more time, do it for 120. Okay, for 120, my friend, here's my 120, is right in here. Uh, that will get me a horsepower rating of what? 50. Can you guys see that? Okay, so that my horsepower rating for the second one is 50. So that's a 50 horsepower. 50 horsepower. The reference for this, guys, is table, table 430.250. That's your reference. Okay? So, that's how you're going to find the, the horsepower rating. Now, we're not done yet. One more calculation you have to do. One more calculation. The second calculation is, guys, this is based on the full load amp. The second calculation has to be based on the lock pressure current. Calculation number two is lock rotor current. What was the lock rotor current uh, for this one, uh, Aaron, my friend? Um, 160. The lock rotor current is 160. For the lock rotor current, guys, you have to go to table 251B. Uh, four, four, 30, oops. 430.251B. The 251B. What the heck is that? Chad speaking. Yeah, hi. Are you guys? Go ahead. Yeah, are you guys coming to pick up the recycling? 
Yeah, what time? Okay, just give me a buzz when you arrive by that and I'll, I'll meet you there. Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, you need to go to the shipping and handling. If you go there, they'll meet you. There's a place where you should just the, the east side of the building is actually <coughs> shipping and handling. So, yeah, the shipping dock. Do you know where that is? <laughs> yeah, do you know where the machinist is? The machi that, that you pick from the machinist area? Yeah, right there where the machine shop is. Mm -hmm. If you if you go just probably 100 feet uh, east to where the Basilica are and turn right uh, another 100 feet, you, you'll be able to see the city right around the corner. Uh, yes, yes. Absolutely. All right, give me a buzz when you're close. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're light enough where two men can carry them. Absolutely. I think so. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's going to have them. That's fine, too. On sale. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, that should be enough. All right. Yeah, well, give me a buzz when you guys are close. Yeah, thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Sorry, guys. This is the recycling for us. They have come in to pick up the stuff. Okay, 430.51B, table 430.51B. My apologies. Um, let's go to this table, guys. 160. Here's the table that I need you guys to highlight. Here's your table. We have not used this before. This is how you find the horsepower rating based on electrical current. Aaron, my friend, the horsepower rating based on electrical current. You need to highlight this one. The voltage system that I'm using as uh, my system is 240, so I have to be right here. The electrical current flows at 160. 160 is right here, 162. If you go all the way across, what's the horsepower rating of this boy? 10. See how easy that is? The horsepower rating is 10. So I go over here, back again, and my horsepower rating of this boy right now is 10 horsepower. Now, I need a genius to tell me if the two calculations came up with two different numbers. One is higher horsepower. Which one are we going to pick? Remember, higher number means more better protection. So we're going to use, so the horsepower rating of the equipment will be 30 horsepower. This equipment will be rated for 30 horsepower. Okay, let's go to the second lock rotor current, guys. The second calculation is lock rotor current. What was the lock rotor current of the second machine? Um, the second machine has 451. We have a 451 amp lock rotor current. So let's go find... Um, the lock rotor current for 451, 451, here you go. So here's the table that we use. Um, I have 451, I have 451, 450, so I should be at 580. Everybody can see that? Because my 451, um, my 451, I have to go to the next standard. Okay, so at 450, I have 451, I have to go to the next standard. Um, and then if you go all the way across, what's the, what is the horsepower rating of this disconnect? The horsepower rating of this disconnect? 40. So we go back and we write right here, the horsepower rating is 40 horsepower. Then... Then we're going to look at two values. This is this calculation shows 50. This calculation shows 40. Which one am I going to pick? The largest. What's the largest? So the horsepower rating of this disconnect is 50. So summarize. I need a disconnect 200 amp, 50 horsepower for the uh, machine tool, air conditioning tool, and 100 amp, 30 horsepower rating for machine number one. You have to do the calculation, the horsepower, you have to do the two calculations. The two calculations based on the lock rotor current. The lock rotor current and the full load current. Okay? 
Any question guys about this? Lock pressure current and full load current. These are the two calculations that you have to use. Any comments? That's no. Joe, my friend, this step, we have not done it before. Sizing uh, a horsepower for, um, we have not done sizing the horsepower uh, based on the lock torture current. So when I give you guys a test and I ask you to size the disconnect, uh, my expectation is to have two things, horsepower size and amp size. Horsepower, amp, piece of cake. Horsepower, you have to do two steps to find the horsepower size. Any question guys about this? Yes, but what the nice thing about the motor, 50 horsepower motor. What's the horsepower rating of 50 horsepower motor? Yes, yes. When you order your motor, um, you can you see a 200 amp disconnect with 50 horsepower rating. You have to specify the, the horsepower. That will give you the disconnect size. And of course, from the voltage and the horsepower also give you the NEMA size, the NEMA controller size. They want the disconnect guys to be able to interrupt. They want here the disconnect to be able to interrupt the air rush. Um, if the motor is stalled, if the motor is stalled and burning, right? Say the motor, I drop the motor and stall and burn. I need to be able to come in here and unplug it without blowing this in my face. That's why they use the lock pressure current. If the motor is up and running, right, and I want to shut that my motor down, you're not supposed to use the disconnect to shut it down, but you, there's an emergency and I see somebody's finger being stuck there, and I don't have a push button, I, the closest to me is the disconnect and the, and the motor is running, and I go disconnect there. If it's not rated based on the horsepower, it will blow up the motor. The reason, the reason why these are a big deal, guys, because there's a lot of amps on my way. Same thing for these switches. These are also amp rated, but the amp that comes out of 15 amps, not a big, it's not enough to blow up in your face. But when you have when you have 100 amp going, 100 amp at 480, that's a lot of energy that is trying to interrupt. If it's not rated to interrupt this energy, it will blow up in your face. That's why we have the horsepower rating as well as the amp rating. Okay, can I move to the next step, guys? Almost done. I do have two examples, but I'm going to give you only one example of them. Um, okay, so let's go all the way. And by the way, yeah, all the stuff that I told you guys how to, uh, the whole size is, I have this one, it says 440.20 rating and interrupted. This is where I told you you have to size it based on 115. <coughs> and then the horsepower, it will tell you that you have to size exactly what I just told you. You have to size based on in, uh, in four, uh, table 4, uh, 430.250 and 430.251B and choose the largest. Okay, so that's all directly from um, the MEC code book if you want to highlight it. Okay, so let's go guys and size for the feeder. Now let's go size feeders. Now we're gonna go, we finish the branch circuit, we need the feeder over competition device. Feeder over competition device. Um, article 440.22, your reference for this one is 440.22B1, I believe. Um, and it says, what is the largest over competition device in your system? What's the largest, what was the largest? The largest fuse that we did. Was it how much? 200 amps. It was the fuse size. 200 amps. The fuse size, right? My calculation should show that one. So a fuse size. Uh, over competition device, 200 amps. Okay, thank you. 200 amps. So I got my 200 amps, the fuse size, the largest fuse. Exactly like motors, guys. Add to this the full load current of the other baby. That was 70 amp, so that will be 270 amp, okay? And if it's not a standard, then you're going to go to 240.6. If it's not a standard, where are we heading? We're heading south. 
So 270 is not a standard. Um, what's the next standard? 250? Is there anything between? Can, you get, can somebody check? Should be 250. 250M. So my over temperature device for the feeder is 250. Right? Do I have 275? I always get oh. 175 and 275 get them confused. Oh, three yeah, I have 225, 250, 300. Thank you. Okay, so I have 250. That's a piece of cake, no gimmicks, nothing. Now, the disconnect size for the feeder. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the disconnect size for the feeder. Um, the code allows you guys to start the disconnect for two pieces of equipment if they're functionally associated. So I can have one disconnect here that can um, feed two equipment. So that's the, this is the feeder disconnect. For the feeder disconnect, the same thing, since it's a disconnect, it has two sizes, amp and horsepower, amp and horsepower. So let's do the amp first. For the amp, guys, it's a piece of cake. For the amp, here's what the code says. And let's go through, through the reference first. 440.12b, 440.12b, and also DeWalt um, 3-12. These two references, DeWalt 312 and 440.12b, tell you to do the following. Here's what you're going to do, and that's kind of a tricky one. You're going to take 1.15. Oops, 1.15 amp wise. First, we need to size the amp. So 1.15 times. You have to open brackets and multiply 115 by both full load amps. By, by both full load amps. That's kind of the tricky one. By both full load amps. So the first full load amp is 120. The second full load amp is 70. Can I emphasize that you have to add them? Then you multiply by 1.1. 1. 1. Huh? B2, that, that one? Yeah. 440.12B2. Okay. Sum of them. Thank you. Be more precise. Um, so if you go, if you add them up and you multiply them, you end up with 219 here. 219 amp. Okay, so you're going to go to the next standard for the disconnect. What's your next standard for uh, 219? Do I have 300 disconnects? Disconnects, remember. Yeah, this one goes up. So I have to go to 400. So my next standard is 400 amp. Now, this, this one, like you said, we go up. This connects will always go on. 400. So that's it in terms of uh, disconnect. Now this is the amp size, Jeff. Come on here, already here. Do you mind, guys? I'll take that one. They take I mean, to take some recycling here. Jeff speaking. Hi, what's up? Sorry, guys. Um, last thing. Last thing on my agenda, guys. Promise. Full load amp. When you find, when you size the, now remember, we're sizing the disconnect horsepower wise. Here's what you need to do you need to size it based on full load amp. So, very simple steps. You need to take the 120, add the 70 to it. And that will get you 119, 19 amp. Oops, 190. We need to find this, the horsepower, okay? That will 190 amp. Then, then you need to take the um, 
Then you need to take, let me see if I can get the color. Then you need to take the 190 amps. You have to take it to table 430.250 under 4240. What's the lock filter current here? Um, I have 75. So you need to take the, see how we add them up? We add them up, guys, um, and we're going to go for, now both of them have, uh, this is not the table, that, yeah, 250. I have uh, 190. So where's my 190? 190 is here. If you cross-reference it here, I came up with 75. You add them up, add them up because now it's the mean. Add them up and size the uh, horsepower for, for the two together. So I size them, mm -hmm. I add them up. And based on this calculation, Jeff, I came up with one, I want uh, with 75, 75 horsepower. Okay, what's my reference here? Table 430.250 and also table 430.251B. Okay, now this is for the full load. For the lock torture current, same thing, guys. For the lock torture current, I'm going to use green here for the lock torture current. Let me just slow down here. Any question, guys? What I did, I added the full load amps and I went to the table and size based on the sum. Add them up. The lock filter current the same way. You're going to take uh, 160 plus, you take the 160 plus um, 451, uh, that will get you a healthy 611. 611 amp. Then, if you take the 611 amp to this table, let's go take it. I have 611 amp. There you go, Jeff. Take it to this table. No, not this table. There you go. So 611 amp. 611, 611 is right in here. And that will refer to what? 50, right? I have 611, so I'm right here. I have to go referencing it, so it's 50 amp. Is that what it came up? Yep, 50 amps, Chad. Everybody can see how we use this table, guys? We're referencing it. So 50 amps, you go here, and that baby can get you. The horsepower is 50 um, horsepower, not amps. 50 horsepower, based on 611. Um, now then, the last step that you have to decide is um, I got 50 and 75. Which one is going to dominate? The 75. So when you buy your disconnect, you're going to go call the color hammer and see I need a 400 amp disconnect that rated at 75 and the voltage is 240. See how easy that is? I can't emphasize, we haven't done that this one atom before. We add the two amps together. We add the two amps together and we size them. Why do we add the two amps together, guys? Because we're sizing disconnect for a feeder. I do have a um, number six here. Any question, guys, before I move into number six? I have number six and number seven. Number six, guys, is a feeder, um, the feeder size piece of cake, 1.25, and you size it. Number seven is overcompetition device. You can find it very easy from table 250.122. Really no gimmicks, nothing. Exactly like we did before. Really, the only tricky one, the only new stuff that we did today is really this. That's about it. Everything else we've done it for single phase before. Any question, guys? So that's what I would like to emphasize. Any question about how we size the horsepower from the full load current and lock filter current? For the feeder, you add them up. For the brand circuit, you just use, if that was a brand circuit, I just use 120 and 160. Uh, I mean, in this case, 70 here and 160 here. Okay, so let's go ahead and, um, Jeff, a little bit more. Huh? 
um, if I was sizing, if I was sizing the horsepower for the branch circuit, remember how we size the branch circuit based on the 17 homoramp and based on the lactose branch for only one motor. Why? Because that one is directly is just disconnecting one motor. Makes sense. That's what I'm saying. Seventy and one sixty for the branch circuit. Fifth, uh, one twenty for load amp and four 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 fifty one is for the branch circuit for the second one. No, no, we don't. No. Yeah. Feeder size. Let's go to the feeder size, guys. My feeder size. My feeder size. Uh, here's my feeder size. Let's go to. Um, <clears throat> let's get the reference first. The reference for feeder size is 440. Always good to have the reference. 440.33. And of course, table 310.15B16, which is here. And then you start your math. Um, 1.25 multiply this baby multiply this baby by the largest motor 120 plus uh, 70 this will get me a healthy 220 amps then 220 amps you take him to the table 310 16 on the 75 degree column and you get yourself a three conductors number uh, four at a w g t h x n or it could be th w or whatever the installation your default is th n unless you know otherwise see how easy that is guys which column do we go to when we go to the 310.15 b16 always a 75 degree Equipment running conductor, guys. Seven is equipment running conductor. All right. I think, did we say seven A? What was A? Uh, a is for the first one, right? I don't have it here. Let me just go back here, if you don't mind me, quick. The last thing I'm going to size, guys, I'm going to size the equipment running conductor, A is seven A. 7B is here and 7C is the feeder. So I'm gonna I just called them seven here. Go let's go down here. Um, I'm gonna call so let's go to size it very easy piece of cake. What my grand conductor? So I'm gonna say 7A. 7A was for uh, motor number one. And the way we size it for motor number one, what was the over temperature price for motor number one, guys? Was it 300 for more number one? They lose uh, 200. For, for more number one was 200. All what you have to do now is um, go take the 200 amp, take it to table 250.122. Anybody can do that? I don't have the answer for that. 110? Okay, thank you. More number one. Uh, Motor number one is 110 amp. Okay, uh, what would that be? Anybody? How many? One conductor, number 6AWGTHHN. I'm fully uh, insulated. Any question guys about that? That's a piece of cake. Now let's go to 7B. 7B. That one for motor number two, and motor number two was 200. Now we know that, 200 amps. Same table, get you one conductor, number, Aaron, should be ahead of you, man. Same size? Number 6AWGTHHN. The last thing, 7C. This is for feeder. This one is for feeder. 
The other one's for brand circuitry. Right? This one is for feeder. What was the feeder size? 210? No, the overconfiguration device. 250. So here's my 250 amp overconfiguration device. By the way, all these, all these are overconfiguration device, right? Overturn protection device. Okay, so if you come from here, one conductor, what size? For 250. Number four. Number four. A W G T H H N. T H H N. Any question, guys? Any comments? Any question? Now, here's what I would like to remind you. The equipment ground conductor is number four. The feeder conductor is four out. If the feeder conductor, guys, if this number is larger than number four out, say if it was 250, you don't have to go higher than the phases. For example, this coming happening a lot in motors. In the motor, you have a conduit. PVC conduit, you pull in three conductors for the three phase, each one of them is one out. And you size the overconfiguration device and you end up with the size two out for the overconfiguration for the equivalent ground conductor. Do you have to use two out? No. The equipment grounding conductor does not need to be larger than the ungrounded conductor. So can you write to yourself a note that equipment grounding conductor anywhere in the code does not need to be larger than the ungrounded conductor meaning this number number four doesn't need to be more than four out how about the other two number six what was the ungrounded conductor for number six motor two what was the size for no motor number two one out so this is less good how about the number motor number one Number three, this is number six, smaller, so it's not larger. In motors and, and HVAC equipment, guys, this becomes a big deal. Any comments, any questions, my friend? Yes, or 800. Right? So you might end up with a, an equipment architecture that's higher. Do me a favor. Everybody's done with that one, guys? So uh, let's go all the way to the homework. I don't want to give you, I have another example. I'm not going to give it to you guys. So here's my homework. Can you guys, here's the homework that you, I would like you to do, homework number six. Homework number six. Full load amp is 233, 351. Lock rotor current 110. 1010 and 1200, 1, voltage 483 phase. And what do I need to do? I need to size these seven things. Make sense? So that would be the two homeworks for you. This will be, and I know there are another example, guys, with every one of them, but I think one example with the homework is good enough, right? Plus, I'm going to go over some of it on the test, too. So if you can't get it after that one, you might have to ask your friend chat for a refund. Cool? I will PDF this one, put it in a network. Okay.